Attorney Deaton has recently highlighted the SEC's shifting stance on the common enterprise argument in the Ripple case. By the way, why has Ripple refused to burn all the XRP stored in the company's wallet? Moreover, Attorney Deaton has commended Tarrant for releasing the latest memo. Finally, a recent speculation has emerged within the XRP camp amid the circulation of documents linking Ripple to a blockchain policy paper in Korea, but the question remains this, how true is this? Stick with me till the end to find out more. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP. To stand the chance of participating, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP, and the winner will be announced on 31 of May. Attorney John, a prominent lawyer advocating for favorable crypto regulations, has slammed the United States Securities and Exchange Commission's shifting stance on its common enterprise argument in the SEC v. Ripple case. For context, the common enterprise is one of the prongs of the Howey test, which aids the SEC in determining whether a transaction constitutes a security. In a Twitter thread yesterday, Attorney Deaton, founder of Crypto Law, described the SEC's contradictory position on the common enterprise argument as the schizophrenic defense. According to Deaton, the Securities and Exchange Commission first argued that Ripple was a common enterprise. However, the securities watchdog was forced to abandon this position after Ripple successfully argued that XRP holders received zero interest in the company by merely holding the coin. Consequently, the SEC shifted its theory by arguing that the entire XRP ecosystem is a common enterprise. Deaton noted that the XRP ecosystem includes all XRP holders, all exchanges worldwide that have listed the coin, and all vendors that accept XRP as payment. The SEC also tried to provide evidence for this argument by hiring an expert witness who testified that all XRP holders rely on Ripple's efforts to make gains. Interestingly, the judge excluded the expert's opinion based on the contributions of XRP holders as seen in the 3,000 affidavits submitted by Ripple and the Amicus Curiae, friend of the court, brief filed by Deaton on behalf of XRP holders. Since the second argument failed to stand, Deaton asserted that the SEC developed another common enterprise theory in the Ripple case. This time, it argued that XRP, which it concedes is a software code, represents the common enterprise. Yep, that's their insane argument. I call it the schizophrenic defense, Deaton asserted. Deaton's recent remark prompted reactions from XRP community members and other prominent lawyers, including attorney Bill Morgan. Reacting to the tweet, Attorney Morgan said there is no common enterprise in the Ripple case. He asserted that if there was any justice, the SEC's case against Ripple should be struck out for failing to satisfy the common enterprise prong of the Howey test. It is worth noting that the SEC's common enterprise argument in the lawsuit was recently brought up by Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderity, over the weekend. Alderity noted that the SEC unsuccessfully argued in 1946 in the Howey case that investing in a common enterprise was unnecessary, provided there was a common interest. Ripple's general counsel stressed that common interest is not a common enterprise. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. Matt Hamilton, software developer and former principal developer advocate at Ripple, recently disclosed that Ripple could actually burn all the XRP tokens currently stored in the company's escrow wallets if it decides to. Hamilton, who worked in the developer relations unit at Ripple for over a year, made this disclosure while addressing comments regarding the company's XRP tokens and their significance in the ongoing litigation with the SEC. According to him, Ripple could decide to disable the master key for the accounts that are programmed to receive the escrow tokens when they are released. Ripple could right now publicly and probably render their entire future escrow funds inaccessible to even themselves. To all intents and purposes, burn them, Hamilton stressed. Hamilton's disclosure came on the back of an argument triggered by the SEC versus LBRY lawsuit. Notably, in its lawsuit against LBRY Inc., the SEC requested that the court prohibit LBRY from carrying out any offerings related to digital assets until it has destroyed all the LBRY credits tokens it currently possesses. An XRP proponent asked David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO, if Ripple must do the same with the escrowed XRP tokens. 
A debate ensued, with some parties claiming that neither the court nor the SEC can make Ripple burn the escrow tokens. Others pointed out that XRPL validators could vote to burn the tokens if a consensus is reached, citing previous disclosures from Schwartz. As previously reported by the Crypto Basic, Schwartz confirmed in December 2020 that if validators vote to have the escrowed XRP tokens burned, Ripple will have no choice but to burn them. Responding to the recent remarks on validator consensus, some individuals further stressed that Ripple could influence validators on the XRPL to vote in favor of the burn if the judge orders it. Pro-XRP lawyer Bill Morgan disclosed that while the judge can make such an order, the validators would not be bound by it. Morgan emphasized that if Judge Annalisa Torres extends the order to XRPL validators, she will have to give them a hearing before they can be bound to obey it. Recall that Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, affirmed in an interview in April 2021 that the Silicon Valley firm could consider burning all the XRP tokens in its escrow wallets if the move would make sense for the XRP ecosystem. Furthermore, attorney John E. Deaton, the founder of Crypto Law and pro-XRP lawyer, has applauded Fox Business journalist Eleanor Terrett for releasing a document highlighting plans for a widespread crypto crackdown in the United States. In a tweet yesterday, Deaton joined Fox Business senior correspondent Charles Gasparano to refer to Terrett as Crypto Kid, following her efforts in revealing Democrats' negative stance against the nascent asset. Deaton also commended Gasparano for making moves to ensure Terrett gets the credit she deserves. Yesterday, the crypto community was in shock after Terrett leaked a memo sent to members of the United States Democratic House Financial Services Committee ahead of today's joint hearing on crypto policy. The memo directs Democrat lawmakers to adhere to instructions that would see all crypto assets classified as securities. According to the memo, Democrat lawmakers were asked to counter Republicans' claim of providing clarity to the market and creating an avenue for the Commodity Futures Trading Commission to participate in crypto regulation. The memo noted that these claims show that Republican lawmakers are not focused on protecting United States consumers and investors. It is clear Democrat lawmakers are skeptical about the possibility of crypto assets complying with existing rules, as seen in the memo. The problem is an ambiguity, it's mass non-compliance with existing laws. We can't invent new accommodating regulatory structures simply because crypto companies refuse to follow clear rules of the road, an excerpt from the memo published by Forbes read. The United States is lagging behind most nations in terms of establishing clear crypto rules. Countries like the United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, etc. have been at the forefront of establishing clear crypto guidelines. Last year, President Joe Biden issued an executive order directing all federal agencies to come up with a suitable response to the crypto boom. This prompted the SEC to tout itself as the appropriate crypto regulator while sidelining the CFTC. SEC's Chairman Gary Gensler also claimed that all crypto assets except Bitcoin are securities to achieve this goal. The memo leaked by Tarrant also shows how Democrat lawmakers were being cajoled into backing the SEC to become the main crypto regulator. Both the SEC and CFTC are aligned on the fact that the SEC is the regulator to determine if crypto assets are securities, and the SEC has made clear that nearly all crypto assets are securities, the memo read. However, most crypto stakeholders, like Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, don't think the SEC is the appropriate regulator for crypto due to its adverse enforcement actions against the emerging market. Despite the widespread scrutiny the SEC has received from top crypto stakeholders, the memo still insists that the agency must continue to lead the regulation of the U.S. crypto market. It remains to be seen whether Democrat lawmakers will stick to the memo's directive in an upcoming joint hearing scheduled for Wednesday. Now to the big question of the day, how true is the recent speculation going on in the XRP camp amid the circulation of documents linking Ripple to a blockchain policy paper in Korea? Reports have sprung up within the XRP community, claiming that Ripple is developing a blockchain ecosystem in South Korea. These claims emerged amid the circulation of documents linking Ripple to a blockchain policy paper in the country. Edward Farina, an XRP proponent and the founder of the crypto trading community Alpha Lions Academy, first made these assertions as he called attention to an excerpt of a document that indicated a partnership between Ripple, GBC Korea, and Oxford Metrica. Notably, the document gives an overview of GBC Korea, a blockchain company based in South Korea, as well as Ripple's role in facilitating payments using RippleNet. It also highlights a proposed framework on how GBC Korea's GMAP platform can help retail investors engage in mergers and acquisitions. 
Reactions trailed the recent disclosure, with most proponents expressing their excitement over the development while others took the assertion with a pinch of salt. Specifically, Radhoff Kahneman, a prominent XRP community influencer, provided more context on the document's origin, revealing that the excerpt is from a blockchain policy paper in South Korea prepared by Ripple, GBC Korea, and Oxford Metrica in March 2022. The Crypto Basic highlighted this policy paper last year, calling attention to the partnership between Ripple and GBC Korea. At the time, Radhoff Kahneman noted that it was unclear if GBC Korea would deepen its partnership with Ripple to leverage XRP or RippleNet for its GMAP platform. The global MNA platform is a recently introduced blockchain-based GBC Korea project allowing individual investors to participate in mergers and acquisitions projects. GBC Korea touts it as the world's first platform that allows individuals to invest in MNA projects. Due to limited information, it is difficult to ascertain if Ripple plans to extend its reach into South Korea or provide blockchain-based payment solutions to GBC Korea. Neither of the two companies has explicitly made any statement in this regard. However, Radhoff Kahneman stressed that it is great for Ripple to have GBC as a friend there. As a result of the past partnership with GBC Korea, speculations have emerged on the expansion of Ripple's operations in Korea. However, these are mere conjectures, as the firm has not released any formal statement on progress made towards penetrating South Korea. So we come to the end of this video guys, if you enjoyed it, please make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news everywhere guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content. See you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.